All right, Rock Addicts, this is DJ Rem, and I have Mike from the band Ash the Sky. How you doing, man? Hey, doing all right, doing all right. What's going on, people? We're uh, rocking out over here to kill our music. I've been playing you just about every show, and I've gotten really good response from the listeners, so keep rocking. Oh, nice, nice. That's good to hear, definitely. We were kind of kind of wondering what's going on out there beyond the, the scopes of Facebook and you know the other sites and stuff definitely good to hear yeah i mean the fact that we just kind of happened upon each other on reverb nation that's pretty cool to me you know yeah reverb nation actually has uh worked out pretty good we're getting fans fairly fast on that site now um i thought it was kind of a ghost town like myspace but actually there are people there and obviously you're there there's a lot of people there and um a lot of good bands as well really a lot of good bands out there right now yeah they are and i i think as um i think as facebook tends to uh go down the crapper on us here reverb is going to get bigger i think yeah unless of course facebook pulls their head from their <laughs> beep <laughs> yeah that, that would be nice but i don't know yeah definitely okay, okay so let's go ahead and start with you know obviously your, your mic but go ahead and mention uh your spot in the band, and then anybody else that's, you know, a, a constant member. Yeah, okay. Um, I am the guitar player and vocalist for Ash of Sky. And Chris Morgan, who's in the south of Germany right now, is the bass player. And, and we'll do some keys in the, in the studio and stuff. And we kind of hire as we go. There's a few guys in the United States and San Diego, California that we use couple guys up in the Bay Area as well, and we're kind of going to do this in a way that people want to see us instead of putting ourselves so much out there like everybody's doing, we're going to do it a little differently, and hopefully people like the songs and grasp it and go, man, I want to see this band, I want to see this band, well, if you make yourself scarce, then they're going to want to, they'll, they will show up, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. And um, trying to go against the grain a little bit because of, yeah, the internet downloading, that whole thing. And it's brought everybody close together when, back when I was a kid, everything was far apart. And you really, really wanted to see the band because you never saw them. So we're kind of trying to reinstill this into the scene and see if others follow, you know? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Back in uh, back when I was growing up, if somebody didn't record a new band on a tape, you may never heard them. Yeah, exactly. Whereas the internet, you pretty much just can put a picture up and say, yeah, this is us. <laughs> exactly. And, and then people can just judge you right away, or they can move with you, grasp it, and grow with your band. But usually it's just, okay, there's another band, and they just go next. So we wanted to not do that this time around with this group. We want to kind of make good music, get it out there, get people into it, and have them wonder well can we see them <laughs> you know it's like yeah you'll be seeing us don't worry when we come through your town you'll be dying to see us this is what we want <laughs> right so speaking of that what's in the works right now as far as um shows and gigs okay well actually we're finishing this album up so we're kind of staying back and and using our brains on this getting everything as tight as possible writing new songs as well. Some stuff ain't gonna make it on the record and some things are and so we're keeping it in house right now. But the minute this album's done though, we're we're gonna go blasting around because um, there's a couple labels that are interested that have already sent us mail, if you if you know what I mean. Right. Lawyers lawyers reading stuff up right now, so we will see. I think w what we're going to do first is probably tour the UK and then move on from there. So where are you guys, at? how far along in the recording of the album are you guys at right now? Um, I would say we're maybe not even a month out, pretty close to finishing. It's hard to, it's hard to say really about, about that. I mean, musically, we're just about done with everything. It just depends on the mixing and mastering and how fast they get it back to us and da 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 right and what what um what studio are you guys using actually we're using this studio that's over here 
a small, small little studio, and um, really high end everything else though. <laughs> nice. So it's, everything's been really good. We use seven strings, and and uh, they're getting a the big sound. So that's where we're happy. Definitely happy with the sound. So, are you originally from the states then? Yeah, actually, I'm from San Diego, California. Okay. Um, I married an English woman, and here I am over here. The long move, difficult in a way, because no sun over here, but, you know, plenty of time indoors to practice, believe that. <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, cool, because I, I was like, I was like, this dude sounds American. <laughs> so, I was just trying to figure out how you ended up over there, but a, a, a woman will do it, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I met her in London. Um, like 2004, end of 2004, and um, we we lived in San Diego for a year, got married over there, then um, when she got pregnant, she wanted to come home, so yeah, we got a couple of kids. <laughs> nice. Doing the, doing the normal life thing, and then, um, you know, but I've been writing the whole time, so it's time pretty much to just come out with it right now, so I got let off the leash. <laughs> So what, what, um, what was that that push that got you going again to to start working on this album and get it going? Well, actually, I, I've been talking to I think his name is John. I don't know how to, how to say his name correctly. I think he's in um, Isagram, and um, we had been chatting on Facebook for a bit, and you know, talking about our equipment, and guitars, and stuff. And those guys play seven strings as well. And, and um, I had listened to a couple of their tracks. I was like, wow, that really sparked it. You know, it really sparked it back in me that I still wanted to thrash. I still want to play thrash instead of all the other alternatives out there, you know, because I've been around the block. I did the corn kind of stuff, waste of time. Um, uh, other kinds of metal, faster, heavier, obnoxious. But um, I pretty much simmered it down to, I want to play some smart stuff and um, go out and get a deal and, and really get out there and work. So some things are going down right now. For me, it's working out, actually. Well, good, and I wish you best of luck. I hope everything continues to work out well. So. Thank you very much. So what, um, back in the day when you first kind of got into music and wanted to in, in, and start doing this, you know, what, uh, what were your influences that made you want to go this direction? Uh, let's see. That's <laughs> a long list. It's pretty funny. Uh, I used to drink with this one guy after school and, uh, when I was young, like too young to be drinking, obviously, but, um, he had turned me on to, um, Accept and all these German bands and, and then it moved on from the, the rock metal to like Slayer and Death and Metallica obviously was in there back then. But um, I think it was Slayer, mostly Slayer, kind of pushed me into the, I want to do that. <laughs> right, yeah, so Slayer will do that to you, definitely. Yeah. So, did you have any, um, growing up, did you have anybody else in your family that was kind of into music and things that kind of, you know, helped steer you this way too, or did you just kind of um, come upon it yourself? Really. I, I, I give credit to the neighborhood I grew up in. Because it was like all the older cats were always passing the stuff down, you know, like Sabbath and and Saxon and all those old bands. And they the, the older guys always used to say, you guys, don't listen to that other crap you hear on the radio. Listen to this, you know. Right. Yeah, and, and big influence from the guys in my neighborhood in San Diego. I, I grew up in a place called Mission Village, and it's like... All the guys over there were into metal and rock, and and really ignored the radio. And they really, they really made all us younger guys go into this kind of thing, you know. Yeah, we always say FM sucks, so that's what I think of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've been listening to this rock attic radio; just kills it. Unbelievable! I'm just like unbelievable bands. Just. <laughs> <laughs> every well, every track, well, unreal. I, I appreciate the fact you've been tuning in. That's cool, man. Yeah, good stuff, man. I mean, you know, once you listen to this station, you you definitely will listen to it all the time because it's there. Yeah, and the cool. yep, and and the cool thing, the thing I love about what what I get to do 
because I don't you, you won't hear any mainstream bands on my show. I, I, I have so many good bands that send me music that I don't even need to think about playing mainstream. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the bands that are doing it right now aren't the ones making money, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, we won't even get into the ones making money that suck. <laughs> Did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> so, so I'm sure you've been asked this question before, but how did you come up with the name Ash the Sky? Well, the name, that name really, it's about, it's about nuclear, it's about all the kind of, the kind of the crap that's going on with, within the governments around the world. It's not just our government, it's everybody, where they pretty much don't care about us. That's exactly what they're going to do, is, is definitely fry the sky, believe it, um, with all the chemical stuff they're spraying. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like conspiracy theorist, but I'm not stupid either. Right. And um, that's what the band's really, really formed on is the things that are being done to us, the things that we can't stop because we're not wearing suits and, you know. They really, they're really going to have a problem, though, if they think they're going to make it through with their new old order thing. They're definitely going to have a problem with that. Yeah, I was just reading something where the UN's trying to pass some resolution to ban, help ban small arms and stuff. I'm like, you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. In like, the United States, good luck. Like you're not taking my, you're not taking my guns. Exactly, and and that's that's where this all comes from. I mean, you know, it's pretty pretty much a no brainer. Ash the sky. That's what you're going to have to do to get you know to pass everything. You're going to have to kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Start all over. Exactly. So it's definitely definitely fire involved with the name. <laughs> cool. Fire's good. What um, what social networking sites do you have? Where can people find out more about you when they listen to this interview? They're going to be wanting to know where they can go. So here's a good time to um, throw those Reverb, out there. Yeah, Reverb Nation, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter. And we're kind of moving out. Django Airplay, I signed us up over there. There's a couple more out there. Uh, Last FM, we're not totally there, but um, I've been spreading the word through an old an old band site there called Magni, and that was like just some kind of grind grind metal that was recorded at uh, Tommy Hansen Studio, Jailhouse Studio in Denmark. And, um, he used to produce Halloween in the 80s, so that record's really, really good. Actually, you can get that one on iTunes. Nice. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Facebooks are pretty much main main, uh, main application to hit us up at. Okay. And then once the, once this new album's out, are you going to have merchandise and et cetera to go along with that? Yeah, actually, we're working on merchandise as we speak. Um Shirts, hoodies, stickers, you name it, everything, all the swag you can get your hands on. And yeah, we'll definitely send you guys out the pack for sure. But um, it's the our logo that you've been seeing around, the, the diamond plate uh-huh. with the fire. So the fire goes around the bottom of the shirts, and the whole shirt's diamond plate. Uh, definitely will leave a mark. Very cool. And are, are you going to set up a separate website to, to, to sell that from, or are you just going to sell it at shows? Actually, we're going to sell stuff at, from Reverb Nation, and okay. we are going to do a .com site as well, okay. or a .co.uk site, being over here. Right. Well, when when all that comes to fruition and you get that going, let me know, and I'll, um, I'll help spread the word for you. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's great. Totally appreciate the help. So... Okay, this this question is specifically for you. If I if I grabbed your iPod or your MP3 player, however you listen to music from you right now, what bands would I he- find you listening to? Uh, you would find Forbidden, uh, Death, Forbidden, <laughs> Death. <laughs> um, you'd hear uh, what else? You'd hear some Invade, hear Slayer, hear Black Sabbath. Love Sabbath, man. I love Dio. Just that was a very huge, huge part of my listening growing up. Um, yeah, and more death. <laughs> yeah. 
good theme going here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm into death. I love death a lot. I'm, like I said, Chuck Schulner, uh, great guy, great band, great music. Um, Children of Bodom, love Children of Bodom as well. Chimera, love that band's grooves are humongous. Uh-huh. You yes. know, then the old stuff like Megadeth. I still like Megadeth. I don't throw it on a lot, but I do have them on my iPod. Um, really not into any of the little emo screamos. I think the closest thing was uh, I like a couple songs from Bullet from my Valentine, just a couple. And um, still listen to Suicidal Tendencies. Mostly a thrash death kind of thing I'd say yep that's cool man very cool first three bands that got me into metal you probably don't care about is Megadeth Metallica and Suicidal Tendencies I remember 7th grade somebody introduced me to those three bands and I've been in the metal ever since yeah yeah no actually I care <laughs> and um yeah that's a that's that seems like the combo a lot of people went that way as well when I was young is Megadeth kind of that first couple records, man, you just can't deny it. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Devil's Island. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. So when you're not writing music and, and producing and, and you know doing all this stuff, what do you do to relax and just kind of recharge? Oh, when I'm kicking back, which is never, because I have a couple kids. My son's just a straight nut. This kid, man. Keeps me on my toes the whole time. I mean, my relaxation usually is playing guitar. <laughs> right. I hear you. In a room, in a room with nobody bugging me. <laughs> yeah. I totally get it. I got three kids. A lot of times, for me, that is my relaxation, is just getting to chill with them, you know, and not worry about the world for a minute. Yep, yep, exactly. Used to party a lot. Don't do that stuff anymore. No drinking either, so it's kind of staying staying straight on it, man. So what you hear is real. Nice. Yep, yep. So speaking of the past, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a show you've done? Um, let's see. We opened up for Metallica in 1997. I was in a band called RDK, and... I think the craziest thing that ever happened was the amount of autographs I had to sign at the end of that gig. I think it burned up like three Sharpies. Wow. Literally three Sharpies that night. Well, that that must have been pretty cool, opening for Metallica. Yeah, it, it was. Actually, it was the best night ever, and... Still to this day, I've played festivals, I've done a lot of gigs, a lot of big gigs, and still haven't seen that many people in one place. How many people were there, do you remember? Uh, I couldn't even, I couldn't, I didn't get a number, but I know the pictures that were taken were in the corner of this, of the photo, and the rest is people. <laughs> nice. Very cool. So... Definitely, like a mile of people or so. <laughs> So, I, here's a. This is a question I usually ask, and it's and it's hard because there's really only a couple. Yeah, I usually ask the band uh, who spends the most time in front of a mirror before the show. Are you, you guys? You got to spend a bunch of time getting ready, or you just kind of get just jump out there and do it. Yeah, we're not too primpy and girly like that. It's like, okay, my hair did, hair did. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> right. Nice. <laughs> So that's all it is—is is head whipping the whole night, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that I haven't asked you that you want to uh, tell everyone that's going to listen to this interview about? Um, the next songs. About the next, the next, uh, the rest of the record, uh, the songs that are coming. You know, usually people's demos is a representation of the band and. We put those out because they were the first ones done. <laughs> that's why. And the stuff that's coming after, man, it's just going to be like getting hit by a brick in the head repeatedly. Um, very heavy, very abrasive, very smart, and um, definitely good. 
Well, and I look forward to uh, hearing the rest of them when they're done. And, you know, as soon as they're done, you can get them to me. I'll get them jamming on the show. So Yeah, totally. We're going to send you guys, we'll send you guys the, the pack, you know, the record, the clothes and the stickers and all that jive. Got to get you guys all up on it. Very cool. Appreciate that. Definitely. We can't wait to see everybody. I mean, we'll be around. We're going to be out there, and I don't think we're ever coming home. <laughs> well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you don't have to make your family come to you, right? <laughs> well, the touring part's just going to be a busy, busy next couple of years, I'd right. say. Yep. Very good. All right. One last thing to ask you to do. I would love a couple of radio tags, if you don't mind. Oh, not a problem. All right. So the first one will be for the station. So the first one, you know, you can say this is Mike from Ash to Sky, and you're listening to rockaddictradio.com. All right. Hi, this is Mike from Ash to Sky. You're listening to rockaddictradio.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect, man. That's awesome. Very cool. That one I will send to all the other DJs so they can play it before they play your tunes. Nice. And then now I have to have one for myself, so if you can do the same thing but throw that you're listening to DJ Rem in there. All right. Hi, this is Mike from After Sky. You're listening to rockaddictradio.com with DJ Rem. Metal. Get it. Nice. I love it, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Very cool. Okay, well, um, that's all I got. Just uh, keep in touch. Keep me keep me up to date what's going on, so I can uh, keep help helping to promote you guys. And I wish you the best of luck with everything, dude. Definitely, we'll be like staying in touch and sending you stuff, and you know, keep you in the loop there. Okay, man. Sounds good. All right, great. Okay, well, have a good rest of your, I guess, have a good evening now. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Have a good day, man. Yeah, take care. All right, later. Later, bye.